A very good evening to all my BCA finalized students. Let us commence with the subject of COS, that is Computer Oriented Accounting System. Now, in this series of video or tomorrow or today's morning class, we learned about the different heads of journal entries. And the last, uh, we learned about uh, some uh, specific journal entries. If those things happen in a business, what are the accounting treatments that we do in the books of accounts? Or what are the journal entries we perform in the books of accounts? Moving forward in your video, treatment of payment of payment receives on behalf of the customer or suppliers. Customers are the person who buy from us or who take goods from us and suppliers are the person from where we get goods. Means the person who sells us goods are the supplier, the person to whom we sell are our customers. So if the, there is a payment or received on behalf, means on that particular person on behalf of the customers or suppliers, what is the basic accounting treatment that we have to perform in the books of accounts? Uh, moving in your paragraph, in some cases, business might pay expenses on the behalf of the customers. Such payment do not constitute the, constitute the expense of the business and it should be debited to the personal account of the customers. Obviously, if you are paying on behalf of someone or behalf of customers, then it is not the business expense, but it is a particular person's expense. So it is debited to personal account of the customer. You can see the example. Paid cartage on behalf of the customer to Mr. Bhushan, rupees 50. Bhushan account debited rupees 50 as it is in personal account. Debit the giver, credit the receiver. Okay. And cash is a real account. Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Cash of rupees 50 is going outside the business. But Bhushan account is debited because it is a personal account. And the rule for the personal account is debit the receiver, credit the giver. So, the person who is receiving or the person on whose behalf we have given, we have to debit the amount of that particular person. I repeat myself, paid cartage on behalf of customer, Mr. Bhushan, rupees 50. So it is uh, the rule of uh, the uh, books of account that you have to debit the personal account of the customer. So here the customer is Mr. Bhushan, so we are debiting or we are deb debiting or we can say we are uh, writing a debit on Mr. Bhushan's account. Bhushan's account debited rupees 50 to cash account rupees 50. Being cartage paid on behalf of Bhushan is your narration. Next. Similarly, business might receive an amount on the behalf of the supplier. Such receipts do not become an income to the business, it should be credited to personal account of the suppliers. So the reverse entry, if you are paying on behalf of customers, you have to debit the customer's name. If you are receiving in, in the part of suppliers, you have to credit the supplier's name. It, the same entry, it is just reversed. So if you remember only single entry, you can just reverse the entry and write for the receipt part. If you know the payment part, you can just reverse the entry and write for the receipt part. Let us see the example. Received interest rupees 70 on behalf of the supplier, Mr. Shashi. So cash account debited 70 rupees to Shashi account 70 rupees. Being interest received on behalf of Shashi. So we are receiving an interest of rupees 70 on behalf of Shashi. That is not our personal income, neither the income of our business. But it, we are receiving on behalf of somebody. That is the supplier. And the supplier name is Shashi. So we have to credit the Sashi account. If it will be, have been a uh, payment done, then we should have written Sashi account debited to cash account. But it is a receipt and income. So we are writing cash account debited to Sashi account. Just the reverse entry. Moving ahead. Treatment of exchange of new assets with old. So sometimes uh, old assets are exchanged for the new assets. Means old assets means they are uh, time has been used, new uh, time has been passed, there are new technologies, uh, the product have gone uh, to a uh, death or you can say a scrap value of the product has came up. In that case, you exchange your old products or old assets with the new one. Old assets with the new one, not the products, but the old assets with the new assets. So what, if that happens in the business, what is the journal entry or the journal treatment you can give in your business? Let us read the paragraph. Sometimes business may exchange its old assets with the new one. 
Only difference is the value is paid in cash. In such cases, asset account is debited with the actual amount paid. Okay. So whatever the amount is paid for the new asset, the actual amount has to be returned and debited from the asset account only. Means we brought a plant uh, or we brought a plant of rupees uh, 500. So we have to debit the plant account only. If we are exchanging also, we have to subtract the value at which we have sold the old plant and we have to write the new value means old minus new we have to get a value and we have to write down okay you will better understand with the set of example so see the example one exchange old furniture for new the value of the furniture was 350 old furniture was rupees 350 while the value of the new furniture is rupees 900 so if we subtract 900 from 350 we are getting an amount of rupees 550 that is the actual value of the asset that is the actual value of the asset as you are exchanging the old old asset to the new one so you have to subtract the value of new asset with the value of old asset then you get the actual asset value so furniture account debited it is an asset which belongs to the real account debit what comes in that is furniture is coming inside the business so 900 minus 350 that is 550 rupees to cash account as cash is a real account and belongs to the cash is a belongs to real account and the rule for the real account is debit what comes in credit what goes out if furniture is coming inside the business cash is going outside the business being exchange old furniture with a new one always remember students whenever you exchange that asset you have to always subtract the value of new asset with the old one the pr the price at which you have sold the old asset you have to subtract and get the actual or the real value of the asset and write it in your books of accounts moving ahead treatment of depreciation charged on fixed assets okay we already learned what is depreciation depreciation is a we can say possession of the business or the property of the business fixed assets are those properties and possession of the business which are used to carry on the business, example, plant, machinery, building, etc. These fixed assets have some particular value and these are not purchased again and again in the business. They are there for a long duration of time and these fixed assets are possibly having some depreciation value. So why we depreciate these uh, value? Because of wear and tear, the particular usage. Second is passage of time. Third one is absolence. Absolence means it is a condition where the value of an asset becomes zero or the value of an asset comes to a scrap value. That is, we saw, say as absolence. So, the fixed asset examples are plant, machinery, building, uh, you can say as a plant, machinery, building, etc. These are the fixed assets of the business and they have a particular depreciation value. Every year, every accounting year, there is some percent of depreciation done to those assets till or until it has no use to the business or it values become to a scrap value or it values become to a zero okay depreciation account is debited and respective uh, asset account is credited obviously depreciation account is debited over here depreciation is an expense or loss to the business so debit all expenses and losses and asset is a real account debit what comes in credit what goes out the value of that asset is going outside the business so we are crediting the particular asset account let us see the example plant purchased rupees seventy thousand provided depreciation ten percent per annum pa means per annum means annually it is calculated for full year on original cost. For full year on original cost. So 70,000, 10% is 7,000 rupees. So we'll write directly the 7,000 rupees into consideration or we'll consider 7,000 rupees as depreciation. 10% of 70,000 is 7,000 rupees. Depreciation account debited 7,000 rupees to plant account 7,000 rupees. Being depreciation charge on plant annually always depreciation is charged annually and there is a certain percentage which is charged annually to the particular asset why it is charged because of wear and tear because of passage of time and because of absolence next interest on capital what is interest on capital if interest is allowed to the proprietor on his capital it is 
it is treated as an expense of the business interest on capital is not paid in cash to the proprietor it is made due by crediting the capital account is always credited okay interest on in capital it is a what to say income to the proprietor but an expense to the business income to the proprietor second is is expense to the business so the capital is brought into the into the business by the proprietor only so it is an income if you charge interest if you give money to the uh, money to the proprietor it is an income to the proprietor but an expense to the business the it is made due by crediting it to capital account it is always credited so it is always credited to capital account example interest allowed rupees 10 interest allowed 10 percent on capital rupees 50 000 to the proprietor so interest is allowed that is 10 percent of 50 000 to the proprietor so there is a slight mistake it will be 5 000 rupees not 50 000 but 5 000 rupees i have uh, just correct i'll just correct it that is 5000 rupees so interest on capital account debited 5000 to capital account 5000 being interest paid on capital whenever the interest is paid it is not given as a cash but it is credited to capital account it is again i repeat myself it is an income to the proprietor but an expense to the business similarly we have interest on drawings what do we understand by this similarly interest may be charged on drawings from the proprietor it represents income to the business therefore it is debited to business since it is charged to the proprietor his capital account of drawings is debited obviously drawings is related to the personal expense personal expenditure or personal expense of the proprietor so we debit the personal expense or the drawing parts of the proprietor so example is interest charged from proprietor on drawings is 500 so interest is charged rupees 500 from the drawing so the entry is drawing account debited rupees 500 to interest on drawing account rupees 500 being interest charged on drawings next is bank charges what are the bank charges bank performs several services to its customers some charges are collected from the bank for these services this is an expense to the business as per the rule increase in the expense is always debited these charges are deducted from the bank from the account of the customers with the bank therefore bank account is credited in the books of customers and it is decrease in the bank balance in the bank balance in the bank account okay so whenever there are some particular charges like atm charges uses of some account charges etc so those charges are charged by the banks for the personal account of the customers so those personal account are charged from the bank charges so bank charges account is already already always debited and the bank account is always credited example bank charges rupees 200 towards cost of checkbook and accounts statement so bank charges account debited 200 to bank account being charged rupees 200 on cost of uh, checkbook and account statement so whenever there are bank charges it increase in the expense bank charges are the expenses so it belongs to nominal account so we are debiting or we are doing we are writing as dr for the bank charges because it is an expense and we are crediting because it belongs to the particular bank or we can say to the bank account from the bank or the for the bank account only the money is being deducted so we are crediting the bank account next is miscellaneous receipts miscellaneous means random miscellaneous means random or we can say collective random or collective casual receipts of nominal value are recorded in the separate account to be maintained for an individual item example amount from sales of newspaper or scrap has a nominal value so separate account need to be maintained for this so this properly has to be credited miscellaneous receipt account for such receipts of the revenue so there are some incomes to the business that are miscellaneous means random or we can say collective so those are have a nominal value means some money value to the business so they have maintained under separate subheading called as miscellaneous receipts account example amount received from the sale of newspaper and magazines rupees 140 
so after the sale of old newspaper and magazine you get an amount of rupees 140 so you cannot uh, write individually sale of old newspaper and magazine so you take it as subheading as miscellaneous incomes or miscellaneous receipts so cash is coming inside the business cash account debited rupees 140 to miscellaneous uh, receipts account 140 being cash received from sale of old newspaper so miscellaneous receipts are the nominal value and recorded separately in the books of account or individually because these have some nominal value to the business so they are recorded under the subheading of miscellaneous receipts account so example is amount from the sale of old newspaper and magazine rupees 140 cash account debited rupees 140 to miscellaneous receipts account rupees 140. Next is miscellaneous expenditure. As we have miscellaneous incomes or miscellaneous receipts, we have miscellaneous expenditure, means random or collective. Similarly, the above, the casual payment of nominal values are not recorded in the separate books of account to be maintained for an individual item. These are miscellaneous expenditure count will be recorded for such account like purchase of newspaper magazine means these are knickknack items which are purchased in the business example subscribe for newspaper magazine and periodicals rupees 100 so newspaper magazine and periodical you pay a monthly bill of rupees something and you get a monthly supply of newspaper magazine and periodicals periodicals means articles so miscellaneous expenses account debited as it is an we can say as it is an uh, expense, so miscellaneous expenses account debited rupees 100 to cash account. Cash is going outside the business, so it is credited, being miscellaneous expenses made. So this is the difference between income and expenditure. If there is an income, we credit the miscellaneous income account. If there is an expenditure, we debit the miscellaneous expenses account. So that's all for today's video. We'll continue with your next video in the next week. Thank you, everyone.